Folks, uh, today uh, I would like to talk to you about the very prominent prayer that more, but at least some of the Hindus use before they start the meeting or any auspicious event and so on. That is this uh, Asatoma prayer. I was told that what it means in English is that lead us from unreal to real, from mortality to immortality. So I would like to talk to you today about this notion of mortal immortality. Basically, what folks are thinking is that this human life or human beings are mortal and there is something called Brahman is immortal and the, the way that we live this life is unreal, there is a lot of ignorance and there is something real beyond human life etc. That is today's topic. Before I talk, I would like to introduce myself very, very briefly. I'm a retired computer science professor and research worker living in the United States. I went through a very strong, unusual spiritual experience when I was 31, 31 years old in India. Ever since I had several uninvited spiritual experiences, and I'm not a monk, I'm a normal family man. I don't have any organization, I'm not a guru, etc. etc. I've said this in the past few videos because. Most of you um, will question my qualifications before listening to me. So please watch my earlier videos to understand more about this. As I said, my spiritual experiences were of the type what people call Thuria state, experiences in Thuria state. You can question that, of course, whether it is really Thuria state or not. I'll talk about that a little later. First, let us talk about this. Uh, let us see about this mortality, immortality, and so on. Again, to give you a to give you a comprehensive view of this mortality, immortality, real, unreal, etc. I would give you a very brief account of what I experienced in the fourth state of existence. But before I do that, let me answer to this question, that is, whether there is anything immortal? If so, what is it? Everything, everything created will be dissolved. Except the unknown Everything else is mortal. What do you call Satchit Ananda, that is Brahman, or Mayeshwara, which has this um, 
aspects of um, Brahma, Vishnu, Sadashiva, or Shiva, Shakti, etc. Everything is mortal. What is immortal is what appears to be dark, from which everything comes out. That is the short answer. So let me explain why I say so. Again, very briefly, for some of you, this may be the repetition, but many of you will probably be watching this video for the first time. So let me briefly say what I found when I experienced or when the experiences were revealed to me in the fourth state of Turiya state of existence. I come out of nowhere and at that time after coming out the, the thing that I came out of appears to be dark and something separates from me and then it says I'm a being, non-being, etc. This is what probably in Saivism you call Adi Shiva and Adi Shakti, that is something which came out of nowhere. And the being which was in front of me, actually it was just a voice, a female voice, that's what you call Sat. Being. But it was not immortal. It came from the darkness. That voice, voice itself says, I may be don't wake up this darkness that will eat me up and I'll become a non-being. That is, it will die. Then after some time, I will sprout again. That's rebirth. So you can see the thing that came out of this eternal unknown is not immortal. Then it becomes the three lights. It creates the three lights using me as a witness. It becomes the five Bhutas or what do you call the five snakes on the top of um, or on the side of uh, Vishnu or whatever, the witness. I, I, I um, have uh, described this in a, in a few videos recently in, in uh, also in my first video. <clears throat> then something which comes out of me goes out and becomes everywhere. It spreads everywhere. The thing that was saying that I am a being and become a non-being became three lights when I look through the three eyes that thing in front of me created for me after becoming the three lights the white light the golden light and the red light it spread itself everywhere, Every, uh, uh, many, many, many instances of 
the three lights were created. In each instance of the three lights is a human being or, a, or what you see in the waking state around you. That is a short story of this creation. The solution is, of course, starting from you, a human being, when you die, you lose your mind, the mind, whatever your experiences in that life. Will go back to or will will be part of the universal mind. And then the life principle in you, that's the golden light, area of the golden light will go back to the sea of gold light. The eye principle in you, which is area of the white light. We'll go back to the sea of white light, the ocean of white light. That's what happens when a human being dies. The ray of the white light which is inside you is what Vedanta teachers call as Atman. And the sea of white light from which the ray comes out is what those folks call as Paramatma, that is, or Brahman or whatever. In uh, Christian tradition, it is called uh, Father. Because this ray of the white light came from the sea of that white light. As I said a few minutes ago, these three lights were created when I looked through the three eyes. They will be destroyed when I stop looking through the three eyes. You may not like me saying that I, when I look through this, the three eyes, but let's say the witness behind the three eyes stops looking through the three eyes the three lights will be gone. The one which created these three light, eyes and the three lights, which came out the came out of this eternal darkness, will at some time. Stop being a being, become a non-being, and it will be gone. And go back to its origin, that is this eternal darkness, unknown. In Shaiva tradition, the witness and witnessed. The Shiva and Shakti will merge, will become one and the same, become what you all call, what Shaivism calls Ardhanari Swara, and that is the dissolution of the witness and witnessed, the first witness and the first witnessed. So as you can see, all these things are immortal according to various conceptions 
or various books that folks have. But they are really not immortal. They are all mortal. They are immortal for a longer time when you look from the viewpoint of a human being. For example, if a mosquito has the ability to look at the life of a human being, it will say human beings are immortal because compared to the life span of a mosquito, human beings live longer. Same way. What you call human being, that is the instance of the three lives. Live for a shorter while, whereas what do you call uh, the three lives, the Brahma, Vishnu, Maya, Sadashiva, or Maheshwara, or Adi Shiva, and Adi Shakti, the witness and witness. They last for the whole cycle of creation and destruction. But still, they are not immortal. They are mortal. What is immortal is where this initial witness came from. The initial witness and witness came from or where this Adhanari Swara ends up. That is unknown, totally unknown. Some of the Upanishad folks call that as a Nirguna Brahman. You cannot call that as a Nirguna Brahman because you, you, there is nothing you can talk about it. It is just unknown. It is the basis from which everything sprouts. Nothing can be described about, described about it. In order to describe them, somebody has to observe. And there has to be an observer and observed, or witness and witnessed, so that the witness can experience the witnessed and talk about it. But if they, if they if the witness and witnessed are one and the same and they merge, there is nothing to be described. There is nobody to describe. Now, you can question this. I would like to ask all the folks preach, talk about Upanishads, etc. Is your preaching based on some books written long, long, long time ago? Or it's your own teach it's your own your own experience at the fourth state of existence, as you call it. For example, take Buddha. Whatever folks call as Buddha's teachings, they are not the recording of Buddha, it was written, all those teachings were written, created after Buddha is gone, several, after several years of his, uh, his death. You can question my view if you experience the fourth state, the fourth state of existence, that what you call Turiya state. 
not using the textbooks. Over the years, I was told it is about several thousand years ago, the Upanishads were written. It could, it could have been corrupted or its interpretation could become different over the time. So, if you want to really challenge or argue against my teaching, please do not quote various textbooks, religious books, experience yourself in the, in the fourth state and then use only those experiences to question what I'm saying, to challenge what I'm saying. Another way that you can test what I'm saying is true or not is using scientific technique. In other words, in science, someone proposes a hypothesis. If it, if it explains all the data, if it, if it unifies all the all different theories, existing theories, then it becomes a true hypothesis, a theory. But it could be still challenged. Sometime in the future, someone can find a more unified theory, which includes the one which is proposed currently, and that one becomes a new view of, a new scientific view of the behavior of the data that theory explains. In the same way, if we examine all the religious books, Upanishads, what being what is being taught in Saivism, Christianity, Buddhism, and so on, whether those teachings are explained by what I'm describing, what are what I experienced in the fourth state or not. You can examine, and if you have any questions, you can comment. I will respond. So the bottom line, folks, is that there is nothing immortal except the unknown, the eternal unknown. 